In Myanmar, deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been charged with violating a colonial era secrets law. The UN special envoy has warned of a possible civil war as clashes between the army and pro-democracy activists intensify. Crowds have gathered every day since the army seized power two months ago. Security forces have killed more than 500 government opponents. Thousands more have fled to neighboring Thailand. And for more, we are now joined by journalist uh, Dave Grunebaum from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Dave, Aung San Suu Kyi, three of her deposed cabinet members as well as an Australian advisor, all charged with violating the official secrets law. What do you make of that? Yeah, so them as well as Aung San Suu Kyi too. Well, this is a colonial era law. And the way these colonial era laws in Myanmar, they're written in a way that are so broad and it's so vague that you can twist and turn them to make just about anything a violation. And, and that's, you know, we don't know the specifics of what she allegedly did here that would lead to these charges, or, or, or same goes for all of them, but they can, these colonial era laws are written to make it easy to make almost anything a violation. And look, she was charged a week ago, according to her chief lawyer, and her chief lawyer just found out about it two days ago. Mm. So it just shows you how ridiculous the system is in Myanmar. Myanmar does not have an independent judiciary, so the military in the end can bend and twist things to get the result that they want. Uh, Dave, a UN envoy has warned that Myanmar may be on the brink of a civil war. Is it that serious? When you look at how the situation has deteriorated during the past few weeks, the massive uptick in violence, the security forces attacks largely on unarmed civilians, um, now we may see more armed ethnic groups potentially getting involved with the fight in different fronts. The fact that students and office workers from the main cities have been going to the jungles to get essentially crash courses in guerrilla warfare. All of this just shows you that this really does have the potential to turn into a full-blown civil war. How quickly we get there is a little difficult to say, but as this develops, we could suddenly be looking at food shortages, Mm. Um, the public health care system in Myanmar, which even before the pandemic was greatly under-resourced, well, now it's barely functioning. That could get much mm. worse. This could absolutely turn into a complete humanitarian disaster. And Myanmar, a country who just a couple of years ago, people were talking about the potential for it. Mm. Well, now we have to wonder if it's going to turn into a failed state. Before it does, what would it take at this point to resolve this crisis? Is there any chance for talks or dialogue? There's still time, but the countries that haven't, you know, taken the steps, started taking the steps necessary to do that, um, so many haven't done that yet, and time is running out. If you look at the UN Security Council, well, you've seen strong steps being pushed from Western countries, US, UK, France, but... Two other countries that have veto power, Russia and China, have not allowed any strong action to come out of the UN Security Council. Would either of those countries do anything individually? China could make a difference here. China's got some leverage here, but China doesn't seem to have an interest in doing that. They haven't shown that yet. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which Myanmar is a member of, they could, they could have some real impact here. They've generally had a policy of non-interference in each other's internal affairs, but lately we're seeing stronger statements coming out of members such as Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand. But they're going to have to really do more, and they're going to have to step up the pressure politically mm. soon if it's going to make a difference. Dave Grunebaum from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Thank you very much for this assessment.